And the father has a particular view of his son, the son, that he wants to form in us. Uh, I believe this. For many years, I believed it. Then the Spirit of God began to not just explain the truth to me, and, and then, you know, that I'd heard from others, and not just open the scriptures to me as pertaining to that. But I believe he began to show me the Father's heart, that the Father has a particular view that he wants formed in us of that son. He doesn't just want, and, I, and I'm going back to my progression, he doesn't just want me to know that um, that's true doctrinally, which I I, ga I gained when I was at Berean. He doesn't just want me to um, make that my theme. He wants that from his heart, that his son would be formed in us in a particular way. And once I began to see that, my, my, my sharing changed my, because I realized that this is something that he wants more than I want, that this is something that doesn't first pertain to me, but it pertains to Jesus, but it does pertain to me in that I have to, whatever, get hungry and get motivated get hungry and get motivated, come back, you know, uh, because I, I am a personal believer that all of that facts and knowledge and reality and doctrine <clears throat> and deep teaching and great books and all this can lead to a far country. Now, that's my opinion. It can. I just think it can. I think it has. I've, I've been through several churches church groups before this, and I could probably, uh, in fact, I could count on one hand those who have continued. <laughs> I could count on just a couple, you know. And so if this is important to the Father, then it needs to become important to me. It needs to be uh, real in my heart and if it and these things if they become real in us <clears throat> they're like a compass they genuinely are they will keep you well they'll keep you they'll keep you from being deceived they'll keep you from getting off they'll keep you from um, and you know I, I'll the, the picture I get is <clears throat> um, Mary of Bethany. And um, in contrast to the, tr the disciples that are there, those disciples, they kept right on, you know, you, you go all the way into the book of Acts and they are still focused on building the church and people getting healed and stuff like that. They still are. And you get a hint from, from Peter's writings, which happened many years later, that Peter was trying to explain to people that Paul has a view of Christ that is very deep and it would, you know, but you need to respect it. And, um, and then in the end, you hear, at least historically, we are told that most of the disciples died some way. Some of them crucified, some of them, you know, most, you know, but they died for this reality. It became real, finally. Um, 
But it certainly wasn't real before it all happened. And we, we've discussed that before with Thomas, you know, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, Thomas, you know, you, you, blessed is he that doesn't see but believes. And we go, well, you st stupid Thomas, you're the worst of all the disciples other than Judas. None of them believed until they saw. They didn't. They weren't standing around going, I know he's alive. I know they're doubting and run and check it out. And they hear from, from Mary Magdalene, he's alive. And they're going, what? And they, they went through the same thing. Because they were not, they had not entered in through that gate of the heart. And Mary, um, Mary Bethany, I believe, did. Because her focus was the, the lamb, the death, burial, and Christ. That's what it was all about. She does this for that. Then didn't say she does this because she believes I'm one of the best teachers. She didn't say she's doing this because, um, you know, she respects my ministry. <laughs> she saw in him something of that eternal spirit and it brought her to her knees and it brought her to tears and it brought her to lavish on him something that had moved her heart while the disciples are going well this is stupid and this is a waste you know and Jesus is going this will forever be spoken of and I'm sorry your ministry up to this point guys is really not it that's the sweet version you know, um, so the um, so there is this heart thing that I believe was there before the foundation of the world and caused the foundation of the world in relationship to forming Christ in us. But we all know that. So let me let me let me share a little further concerning Christ in us in a particular way and we'll never know that particular way unless we know the Father's heart you know we're not going to know it nobody's going to teach that into you nobody can teach the heart that 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 Mary Bethany saw and responded to nobody can teach that to you it's not you know you're either going to come into that or you're not you know and so, um, so I was thinking of uh, Hebrews 8 and verse 5 to start with. Hebrews 8, verse 5. Now, you know, I will tell you this. The book of Hebrews is way more than most people think. They think it is, uh, an, uh, you know, this um, really good presentation of Christ above everything else. But it is a, an expression of the heart of, of someone who has seen the heart of God and is trying to get us to grasp. It would be like trying to get the prodigal son to grasp the son that is in them by looking and truly getting it from the, the face and the actions of the father. And I think that's what I personally, you know, you don't have to believe that. But I think that's what the book of Hebrews is because it, it is so focused on Jesus, but not just in a doctrinal way, you know. Okay, so verse 5, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. All right, well, that's exactly what the 12 were doing when Mary of Bethany was doing it, okay? And as Moses was admonished of God, notice the words admonished of God, when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern of shown to thee in the mount. All right, so admonished of God. Admonished of God. Folks, that's the Father. It's the Son. It's the patterned Son that he's referring to. If you want a, an exciting little search, get into the book of Acts and notice how they bring up scriptures and they, they take it out of, for example, uh, one place it says, and the, and the Holy Spirit 
da 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 and he said this, and you go back to that scripture in the Old Testament, it doesn't say the Spirit said it. But they knew each one, and they were in tune with that, and they responded by a union, not just a relationship, because in that sense, I hate the word relationship because two people are in a relationship, but a union will bleed into you that life as you are a branch and you will shoot forth without trying the fruit of, uh, the fruit of union. Okay, but we can say, well, then you'll have love, joy, peace, and you know, da 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 da. So we, we pursue that by relationship instead of by union. I, I'm telling you, there's so many things. It's, it's like getting so close and just never really hitting it on the head. So, so it's God the Father who's admonishing, I want you, I have a particular pattern and I want it after that exact pattern of I'm telling you this. Okay, well this is sort of telling you that this might have been something that was in God's heart from the very beginning. We're not talking about the, you do realize we're not talking about the tabernacle here. We're talking about the body of Christ and that all of this come together that we be the temple of the living God and the fullness of that be the, the deal. He's, you know, he's not interested in tents being made a certain way. You know, how, how foolish is that? And how petty of a view would that be? You know, well, I just want to do everything right. I just want to, you know, I want to make sure that I do everything because he said, and oh no, oh my God, you know, this Father, Father, let me see the son of your heart and I will be changed from one glory to the other. Um, and then he says, uh, see, saith he. You could say, see to it. Because he's already shown him that. Because that thou make according to the pattern showed thee. That's past tense. So he showed him and then he said, I want you to see to it that you make this after the pattern that you saw from me above. That you didn't get in a teaching class or something else. And, and it's make it that way all right now how many of us are really actively <clears throat> trying to make everything according to the pattern of the the, the sometimes called the pattern son the pattern of the son according to the father's heart <clears throat> um, well a lot of people aren't because they've never seen it the the one that's God, and notice the words admonished, the one is God, is the Father. And a called son or a born again son is the one who is supposed to make that transition. That's where it comes from. You're not going to make that transition by sitting in a class alone. I mean, I believe there's stuff said and a spirit release that can help us along. If I didn't, I wouldn't even teach at all. Um, but but that requires our heart, see, turning to the Lord, and then we turn to the Lord, and as soon as you turn to him, you look in his face, you see the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, not of him. He doesn't make it about him. When your heart turns to him, he makes it about the bigger picture. <clears throat> all things, make all things according to the pattern the, um, um, the particular view that that God that spoke, who was the Father, had in his heart concerning his Son. We say, well, the, the, we teach the tabernacle, and we say every part is Christ, is Christ, is Christ. It's the Son. It's this Son. But it is, it is found in the heart of the Father um, and is foolish to try to build something that we, we haven't gotten there. We may have it, but we didn't get it from his heart. We may have got it from his Spirit teaching us. I know this is possible because I've done it. <laughs> I have fallen short. 
just like the prodigal. And just like every one of us, we're all prodigals until we get back. We may be son, but we're prodigals because we've gone off from something that was originally initiated by God. Showed to thee in the mount from above. <clears throat> all right, so in, in Galatians 4.19, you hear this more clearly because you can look in Hebrews 8, 5 and go, okay, uh, yeah, sort of. But uh, <clears throat> Galatians 4, 19 is more along that line. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. So, so he is calling us little children, and we, we've discussed this before. Um, we looked at... Uh, the beginning of Galatians 4, and this is still out of Galatians 4, so it hasn't left that theme in the first uh, four or five verses there. And that is uh, just as long as you're a child or born into the family, you're a called son, but you're not the son until God at an appointed time of the Father sends forth the spirit of his son into your heart, child, son, called son, crying, bless my ministry or give me my portion. You know. But it obliterates that spirit of the Son that the Father sends into us by unveiling Him that is already there. Obliterates all of that um, compassionate ministry and it makes it about a higher one and here's the, here's the thing that most people don't get all ministry, true ministry flows from that from memorial ministry it all flows from that it does there will be plenty of stuff to do but we're so set on doing the ministry that we're missing him and you miss him and you're in a far country. That's all I can say. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. Me, you, like I said, I've been there. You know, how many of us will admit that we have been there while going after the Lord? And, but we were really going after the things of the Lord. And we had gathered them up. That's what it says. We gathered them up, you know, and they're precious to us. But they, they like, they start disappearing and we go, where are they going? What's going on here? And then you realize, I am empty on the inside. You know, he began to be in want or lack. I am empty on the inside. That's a great beginning. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, all these things seem to fulfill me, but, and they were of the God, they were of the Father, but now they're disappearing, and I don't know why, and I don't know what's going on, and I'm just empty, and I'm trying to get, I'm seeking, don't you see, I'm seeking in a far country, still seeking, but missing, missing that. We're almost done, aren't we? <laughs> Um, so the father declares the son. But isn't it interesting in the prodigal son story that he didn't declare the son by saying, okay, now, now, born again son, <laughs> there is a greater son in you, and I'd like for you to read these scriptures. And you will get it. Again, heart things. He's communicating by showing him beyond himself that there is a son there. He doesn't have to go, there's a son in there, stupid. Or, there's a son. And be blessed and come into that or whatever. But notice, this is the father. But notice my heart toward that son. as opposed to you and how you were so far from it. Notice my heart. And if you care anything about what we care about, you will pursue this reality. 
But if you don't, you, you're going to just sit and listen and hear and it'll go right through you. And it's never formed. And Paul is saying that you are still children. And I am, I am travailing till the son, this son, be formed in you. you. Is he in you? Yes. But is he formed? No. Not this son. Not this son. Uh, you know, I've been with organizations where the forming of the son was uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. It was, it was teaching. And you would get it and you'd, oh, this goes here and this is, and it's just like, you know, this magical thing of how it all fit together and the scriptures all bore it out and you could move it together and all this kind of stuff and leave the father's house in the process because it was so clear to you it was so such a blessing and never never hear the father's heart never see his face never never feel his hand shove a ring on your finger and say, you're accepted in the beloved, because he won't say that. He's just going to say, the beloved. And therefore, he's doing it to you, so you can assume is in you. Okay, so to me, when that process starts really happening on that level, God sending forth the spirit of his son, where you're crying out a father, um, not, I'm a son. I'm a son by Christ. But you're my father. There's the father of the son that is in me. And he is going to, you know, Jesus said in John 17, and John 17 is so important everything because it's the last one where he really declared you know, other than Father, forgive us. You know what I mean? <laughs> because we're because we're children and we've in a far country. It's the last point where he is, you know, Father, show them that that you have loved them as you have loved me. Okay, so we go. Oh, praise God! There's Jesus and there's me, and we're on an equal basis, and He just loves us both. Mm -hmm. Everything in John 17 is talking about oneness. How would he just jump out of that all of a sudden and go, you know, oh, just be loved instead of even when, and this is my belief, and you know, nobody ever should believe me again. But when he says, beloved, let us love one another, I believe he's talking about the son the beloved son in whom he's well pleased. I believe when it used beloved, it's always talking about, just like, you know, that's the, that's the higher. You drop it down to uh, Mary of Bethany, and here we are, Song of Solomon. She, he's the beloved. It's, it's, a, it's an ongoing, see, it just, you know, it either works down or it's working up like incense. You know, there's a, there's a real beauty in all of this, but it's a beauty of, of God's heart and, of, um, and of, of, you know, I want to say capturing, but, you know, we could never capture that we, as much as we can acknowledge it first and say, I'm, you know, I, why am I writing this letter? This is John. Why am I writing this letter? I'm writing this letter so we can have fellowship together, but truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, and we're entering into that. And what are we entering into? Father, Son, not Father and Christians, or Father and called sons. Or He, he said, look, I want you all to get into what we're into because it's them. And, well, well, how do we get in there, you know? I mean, I know people that you can be standing and holding a conversation. If somebody wants to come in, they'll just almost step in between the two, you know? They'll start getting in the conversation. Well, that's not what we're going to do to the Father and the Son. That is not what we're going to do. <laughs> you don't want to get in between the Father and the Son. <laughs> no, 
You enter the sun, as it were. But he's not saying enter the sun because you're already there, right? But you enter the, the son and the relationship that the son has with the father. And it is a relationship of oneness and it is a relationship of love, not human love and not, you know, of sacrificial love that will honor the other before, you know. And I mean, come on, look at our relationships. You know, we honor and then we dishonor and then we, you know, you know and it's all this kind of stuff. The Father always honors the Son. The Son will always honor the Father. The Spirit will always lift up the Son. The Spirit will not speak of himself. Okay. All right. Well, that's great teaching. You know, praise God. But if it never comes to oneness, that's what it is. It's just great teaching. If it never comes to that, it's just great teaching. There is, so we say, well, then I need to die. It's really not even so much about you dying. Yes, that's a necessity thing, but it is more about bringing them together in oneness and you being the body of the one who has the right heart. What is the new covenant? What is the promises of the new covenant? I will make you a Christian and make you good and better and better and better. And you will one day be like Jesus. You'll, you'll sit at his right hand while he sits at the right hand of the Father. Isn't that what John and James' mom asked for him? Come on. It's that same spirit. It's always in there. It's always conniving. It's always working the, working the plan and the program and, and all this kind of stuff. And there's, um, and it's in a far country. That's just, that's what I, I see. I mean, especially in light of our story, it, I think it would help us if we could actually place our stuff in that context and go, well, you know what? This is just a far country. This is, this is not the heart of the Father. And I didn't have it when I was in the house. <laughs> so I needed to see, he had bad motives, he went out, da 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 da, and then he came to himself and he had bad motives and he came back to the Father's house. But there's an appointed time of the Father, believe it or not, and we don't know that time. But the Father does, and that's why it says, this is an appointed time of Jesus. This is an appointed time of the Holy Spirit. This is the time the Father's going to get his son finally. And so you, you know, and he's going to send forth the spirit of his son. You know, and I, and I was taught that in, when I was in Bible school, and so I'm going, okay, you know. So I would see people praying, you know, in church, and they go, oh, Abba, Father, and I go, eh, I, I know this is me, and I'm just trying to claim I got something that I don't have, and I'm not going to deceive myself, but I'm not going to give up. Lord, Father, I want your son, but you want him more, so just do what you've got to do to get him out of me. But I'm not going to deceive myself until... I'm so far away, I'll never see the Father's face again. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's possible for us to understand how Paul was looking at this group and travailing in birth. Because they clearly didn't see, look, read, read Galatians. And look at, and then read it in light of Christ being the subject and you start with him needing to be revealed, second chapter, um, uh, I am crucified with Christ, third chapter, you know, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, it goes all the way through, even to the end where he says, you know, the, um, I'm crucified under the world and the world, it's always Christ crucified and that spirit because it's not just a father-son relationship that they just get along real well. It's, it is best 
God chose, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit chose before the foundation of the world that the best way to exemplify their love, oneness, and everything is that they would do that by a cross that would be so self-giving that God himself would be treated like he was um, a, a, a um, what is it, Christian reprobate, a heretic a one who is in error and be con concluded by that by the top people that everyone who would believe the top religious people and he would do that in such depths of love because this was the the way that the father wanted him to go and this was in this is in him well i don't want to be looked at as bad well you know just now speaking personally I don't mind being looked at. If, if I know that it's a path that's going to lead to the revealing of the sun, whether it's me or others, I don't, it doesn't matter. See, it doesn't matter if it's me or others or who, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Then it's a good path. And I know that the path is always down before it's going to be up. And I know that something we'll eventually get into on this stuff um, is that you see the resurrection take place in the prodigal son story right before our eyes. You see the resurrection, and it's the son. He's not resurrecting anybody. He's the resurrection in that called son. And it's just glorious in our eyes. <laughs> All right, I need to quit. My God. Father, just thank you so much for your heart and the things that are there that were there before we ever existed. And our little dot on a, on a little ball that's in a huge, huge constellation, in a huge, huge place where there's more and more constellations is not the issue at all. But the one who flung all of that into being has things greater than that in his heart. Holy Spirit, hear us. We'd like that to be brought about. And then anything you want to do with us after that will be blessed because it will be the touch of a nail-scarred hand through us and feet that go because where you want because they're nail-scarred. So bring it about, Holy Spirit. We love you. We love your work of bringing forth Christ. Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.